If you want to chat with your docs, if you want to chat with your text files, your PDFs, CSVs, Excel files, anything, any type of document really, this is such a great project. Private GPT is my most popular video of all time. I made it months ago and since then the developers have built a ton of new functionality and really changed the course of Private GPT completely. And so today, I'm going to show you the updated way to install it. I'm going to show you all of the new features and we have a special guest at the end. So let's go. So this is private GPT. It is completely open source. You can run it entirely locally with a local open source model. You can also use chat GPT if you want to. Everything is super flexible now and private GPT has really transitioned into becoming a developer product. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that, but it's still just as strong for the end user. If you just want to load up your documents and chat with them, this is still one of the best Best options out there. And so this is the GitHub page. It has nearly 40,000 stars, almost five and a half thousand forks. And now they have a super easy to use API. And the way you can think about the API is it's essentially an extension of the open AI API. And really many projects are using the open AI API as the standard and building off of that, including Autogen. And what that means, why that's so important is it makes private GPT an easy drop-in replacement for ChatGPT and then you get all of this additional functionality around retrieval augmented generation. So we're going to check out two things. I'm going to show you how to install the basic user interface and show you a couple of the settings. And then I'm going to show you around the API. And so the first thing to note is that the original version of private GPT is still active. It's called the primordial version. So if you want that, which was launched in May 2023, which is also the same month that I reviewed it, you can find that here. But if you want the updated version, that's what we're going to be talking about right now. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, ServiceNow. ServiceNow enables businesses to automate a ton of their processes, enabling a more productive and efficient team. And now they offer direct AI integrations, including Azure, OpenAI, and ServiceNow's own large language model, which allows for an even greater level of automation thanks to the generative AI controller. And now with their Now Assist AI solution, you can layer AI onto every one of your teams within your business. From IT to customer service to HR to developers. And just as an example, with Now Assist for, let's say, the customer service team, you can decrease response times, summarize cases, gather context more quickly, and make all of your resolution data super consistent. And with Now Assist for creators, you can actually give them the power of AI to generate code, greatly accelerating the time to deployment. So be sure to check out ServiceNow's intelligent AI platform Platform to see how it can automate and improve your business today. The link will be in the description below and thanks again to today's sponsor, ServiceNow. So we switch over to the private GPT documentation and they really spent a lot of time on this documentation. It is very thorough. And as a developer, I really appreciate that. So if we scroll down, we see this quick local installation steps and that's what I'm gonna be walking you through. We're gonna set this up entirely locally. We're not gonna use ChatGPT at all. So switching over to our terminal, the first thing we're gonna do is clone the repo and before we get started, all of these commands, I'm gonna put into a gist, I'm gonna put them in the comments below. So you don't need to copy these down as we go, you'll find them all in the gist below. So here we go, git clone and then the URL and it's imartinez slash private GPT and then hit enter. Once you have that cloned, we're gonna CD into that new directory, CD private GPT. Now in the documentation, they use pyenv, but I'm a big fan of Conda, so that's what we're gonna be using today. And Conda allows you to isolate your Python environments, making modules management that much easier. So we're going to type conda create dash n private GPT Python equals 3.11 and then hit enter. And I already have an environment named that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it and create this new one, but you probably won't come across this warning. All right. Then we hit enter to proceed. All right. From there, we're going to grab this command right here, conda activate private GPT. We're going to paste it. And that's how we're going to activate our environment. Hit enter. Now, you know, the environment is activated because it says so right there. Next, we're going to use poetry to install the UI and the local version. And if you don't have poetry installed, you can use brew to install it. And of course, I'm installing this on a Mac, but the installation process should be quite similar on a PC. I don't believe brew is available on the PC, but you can just Google how to install poetry on a PC. So here we go. 
brew install poetry and I already have it, so I'm not gonna do that. Next, we're gonna do what we said, poetry install dash dash with UI comma local, hit enter. And that is gonna handle all of the installations for us. It's really, really nice and easy. All right, there we go. Everything's installed. It looks like it got installed perfectly. We have one little warning right here, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. Next, we're gonna use poetry to run this script and it's the setup script. And one important thing to note is a lot of the settings that we use to customize private GPT are found in this setup script. So if you wanna customize anything, we can do that. So let's take a look at the customizations now. And if we go to the settings.yaml file, this is where we can actually change the different settings. Here for the local model, we're gonna be downloading the Blokes Mistral 7B instruct model, but the documentation also says that Llama 2 works really well. So you can try either of those models and yeah, because those are cutting edge open source models. So if you wanted to change it, if you wanted to experiment with other models, this is where you would do so. You can also use Amazon SageMaker. And so if you wanted to host your model Model at Amazon SageMaker, this is where you would enter the endpoint name right here. And if you wanted to use OpenAI, you can do that right here as well. But we're gonna stick with all of the standard settings for this setup. So switching back to our terminal, we're gonna run poetry run Python scripts slash setup, hit enter. And this may take a little while because it's actually gonna be downloading the models we need. The embedding model as well as the large language model. And just a reminder, the embedding model is the model that converts text into vector storage. And here you can see we're downloading the Mistral Instruct model, which is about four gigabytes, a little bit over four gigabytes. And you know Mistral is one of my favorite models because it's small, it performs extremely well, and it runs easily on my machine. Okay, that's it. That only took a couple minutes, so that's awesome. And as a reminder, Private GPT is using llama.cpp to run these models, which means that you have to use GGUF format and any model that you actually want to test out, which is fine because that's an awesome format. And by default, it's using Chroma DB as the local vector storage. All right, next we have to set a few values and this is specific to a Mac. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, check out the documentation. They talk about what to do specific to a PC, but for the Mac, this is what we're gonna be doing. And switching over to the documentation, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, here it is. This is what you look for, Windows NVIDIA GPU support, and then you follow these instructions. And this is the main code that you're gonna be running that is specific to Windows. But since we're on, a Mac, here's what we're gonna do. CMake underscore args equals, and then we're gonna say llama metal on, pip install, force reinstall, no cache, llama CPP Python, and then hit enter. Okay, it looks like we actually got some errors. Tree of thoughts, Ader chat, streamlit, pedals. I don't think these are related to the project though. Yeah, and looking through the code base, they have no mention of tree of thoughts, Ader chat, streamlit, pedals. So I think this is related to my local machine. These are all projects that I've tried to play around with, and now they're just incompatible. So I'm just gonna ignore that. I think it's fine. You probably won't see this. Next, we need to set this variable. PGPT underscore profiles equals local make run. Now this is a really important step to follow. And I think a lot of people skip this step. So make sure to run this, hit enter. Okay, and I think that's it. Now it's all loaded up. Let's give it a try. There it is, private GPT. And it uses Gradio for the UI. But of course, now that it's a more developer focused product, the point is you can add it to any UI that you want. So let's experiment, let's see if this works. So if we look up here in the top left, we see mode. We have query documents. Now that is the standard chat with your docs setting. Then we have LLM chat, and that means you just wanna do standard chatting with an LLM and it won't actually do retrieval. And then context chunks is interesting because that is just what you're getting from the vector database. So if you actually wanna see the data going back and forth from the vector database, select context chunks. So let's switch over to query documents and we're gonna upload a file. I'm gonna select this file, which is the Autogen research paper. So now we're uploading it, it's processing it, which means it's converting it into a vector database using the embeddings model, and then we'll be able to use it. Now, as I mentioned, Private GPT is now fully customizable, which means you can set the chunk size, you have a bunch of other settings that you can play around with to make sure that you're getting the best results for your use case. There we go. We have it working, ingested file. Now let's try asking a question. Okay, so summarize the Autogen research paper and there we go. We have a decent summary of the Autogen research paper. Now again, this is running completely locally on my own machine. I bet if I tried other models, we might get better performance. And even if we used an open AI model, we might get even better performance. Now, if we switch over to context chunks, let's see what happens. Let's do retry and it's instant. And we can look through all the returning data from the vector database. And of course, if we switch over to LLM chat, 
chat, I can just say, hello. And it's just like chatting with the Mistral model. Hello, how can I assist you today? Tell me a joke. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. So yeah, that's it. That is the basic setup for private GPT. And so let's do one more test. I'm gonna try uploading the first book of Harry Potter. So we click upload a file. I have it in PDF format. It might be easier to convert it over to a TXT file, but let's test it out with PDF. And if we switch over to the terminal, we can actually see the logs and it says generating embeddings right now. So we can see it working as it goes. Okay, we can see it's done now. Let's ask it a question. Who is Harry Potter? Harry Potter is a fictional character and the protagonist of the Harry Potter series by JK Rowling. He is a young boy with magical abilities who attends Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Magical Studies. So likely the model already already had that information. But let's try a different query to make sure that it didn't already have that information in its model. What is the title of the first chapter of the first Harry Potter book? The title of the first chapter of the first Harry Potter book is The Boy Who Lived, and that's correct. And if we don't clear it, it will remember our conversation, so we don't have to specify if we wanna keep asking questions. Now let's talk a little bit about the API. I switched over to the private GPT documentation, and there's a couple things that I wanna show you. First, you can have different settings, which is really nice. You can have a version that runs completely locally. You can also have another version that tests a different model locally. And you can have another profile that uses an OpenAI API. So right here, our first API endpoint is ingest. And this is a post endpoint. And with that, you provide a file. And you can also get a list of the ingested documents just like that. And this is the completions endpoint. And this is the same exact type of endpoint as OpenAI's API. And as I said, we have a special guest. I'd like to welcome Yvonne Martinez, who is the the original developer of private GPT and also leads the project today. And I have two questions for him. One, what inspires you to build private GPT at first? And two, what are some of the coolest features that are coming up soon? When I started playing around with ChatGPT, OpenAI, APIs, and LLMs in general, it became super clear to me that uh, this was a huge opportunity for the enterprise ecosystem. But when I went out and asked other CTOs of different startups uh, if they were using this technology, they all said no. And the reason was privacy concern. So at the same time, I realized privacy was a huge problem. I was very active in the open source community and I knew about projects like Langchain, Llama Index, ChromaDB, open source vector database. And then at some point, Nomic released GPT for all these smaller LLMs that could run on a CPU of a normal computer. And I said, okay, maybe all of this can be put together. And that's how private GPT was born. I created a very simple uh, chat GPT like experience where you could chat with your documents. But the important part was that you did it fully locally. So you could even run it without an internet connection. We are working on a bunch of things. First of all, we are adding more tools to the API. So we're going to be adding more data sources like uh, access to the internet, like connection to databases. And you can expect some high level tools or APIs like summarization or data extraction coming in the, in the next weeks and months. Then the second part is standard way of observing observing what is going on within the pipelines and also uh, running evaluation to make sure the accuracy is high enough for your, pro your production setup. And the last bit is on the setups themselves, because you can set up private GPT in very dif uh, different ways. You can set it up fully local. You can set it up as a single instance in a GCP, for example, or you can have it like in a, in a distributed way where an instance is hosting private GPT API, but then you have the LLM running on SageMaker, for example, and the vector database somewhere else. So we're going to be sharing with the community different setup uh, possibilities because that's where it comes very, very useful because the whole idea of private GPT is that it is being used in production. So I hope this feels as exciting as it feels for us. All right. Thanks for joining us, Yvonne. And if you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.